to be a very exciting Twitter space because right now, I mean, if you look at what happened in the last two weeks, this has been this has been a tsunami of pre-sales on Solana. And I think what you what you did was really smart. It was smart from a marketing perspective first, but it was also very good to the space. So I can't wait to jump into the debate. Mm -hmm. We need some people who are going to counter our debate from the VC space. Okay, we have the Pulu guys. And I want to introduce myself. I'm Chris. I've been leading Dollmaker. Um, recently, meme coins have been more and more popular with Slurf having more volume than all of the D5X. And that is most likely because people realized that 99% of the projects they never put in more into the system that they take out. They sell more tokens than the utility value that they bring in. So might as well just put a picture of an animal and have a fair lounge. And that's something we're going to discuss. We're also going to discuss the current state of, of the race. We're going to ask some questions because there's a lot of people unclear on what's happening. Of course, of course, my friend. So I'm Nick. I'm the CEO of Bubble Maps, which is an on-chain analytical tool. So essentially what we do is we investigate tokens. Uh, so this can be, of course, meme coins, but also some very popular projects in the space like Uniswap, DYDX, Compound. And we look at everything that happens with on-chain data. And honestly, it's been, it's been quite a journey since we launched. We've covered some of the biggest tokens in the space. We've made some noise. We've been involved in some controversies, of course, because, you know, people usually don't like us digging and looking at what's happening behind the scene. But it's been, it's been fun nonetheless. So no regrets. We keep, we keep digging, man. We keep digging. Okay, Ran is here now too. Um, I think everybody knows Ran. He's a legend. He's been a thought leader in the space, personal friend for many, many years. He started as the head of CMGC, making crypto legitimate long before it was cool. Thank you for being here, Ram. Pleasure, my man. Pleasure, my man. Good to be here. And uh, Sibu is also here, listening in. And a bunch of people. Um, Lady is also here. Michael is also here. Some cool people. Amazing. Well, I'm looking forward to from someone from the VC space to join in a bit later and counter essentially what we think is the most legit system, a fair lounge. And we want to talk a bit about how ICOs evolved for us to get to this point. Moving from super rugs, $100 million raises that go to zero on listing, all the way to IEOs, or a bit better, to IDOs. Those are slightly better because they're being just transparent. And now we are at, then we went to stealth launches, which people think they're legit, but people were just insider trading in the first 30 seconds and then dumping again. And now we're looking at, is this fair launch model really a safe system? Now, Slurf is not dumping because no one has tokens. Will Pundu dump? Can this system be a new way of us? finally having tokens that are not just pump and dumps. And that's something we want to discuss today with all the speakers here. Chris, I think for the benefit of, there's, uh, I think, almost 10,000 people here, which is amazing. But I think maybe just for the benefit of the, the, the 10,000 people, maybe just go through the difference between a fair launch and, and the, the, other metri the other mechanisms. Or maybe just to, to describe to yeah. what you call a fair launch. Of course. Now, fair launches have been a very popular trend recently. They assume that 100% of the money raised is then locked into liquidity on DEXs and essentially collateralize the token. So every token is backed by $1, a bit like what happened with the gold standard. So if somebody wants to sell their tokens, they can take back the dollar that we from the raise out of liquidity. That's one thing, meaning every fair lounge is also a 100% refundable sale, if it's 100% fair. And it allows big whales to buy and sell massive amounts of um, tokens. Right? So many fair lounges have around $10 million in liquidity. Um, the math is not quite correct, but if you have $10 million, you can buy a $1 million or something and move it by 10%. That's the fair lounge. Great, man. Hey, Chris. Uh, 
Okay. I also I also wanted before we jump in to share some stats of what happened in the last two weeks regarding the pre-sale on Solana because this is actually super impressive and this allows us to have some degree of perspective on, on what happens recently. So we've had a total of 33 pre-sales in the last two weeks, actually a bit more, but I'm just sharing the biggest one for a total of 150 million rays in only two weeks from random pre-sales on Twitter. All right. Uh, and so the five biggest one were the one from Digadente, 28 million, then Dixter Cap, 27 million, the third one, 16 million, then 9 million and 9 million. So those, those amounts are just absolutely insane. It's been years I've been in crypto and I haven't seen this since 2021 and even 2017 during the, you know, the peak of the ICO, ICO craziness. So this is um this this is a bull run if I can name if I can yeah, say it for myself. I think I mean I must say I've been around for both of those cycles and I think that the difference between this run and the 2017 run I don't know if you remember but the 2017 run the projects each project was raising a lot of money like some of the projects were raising 30 million dollars like it was like each project raised uh, in big numbers. The next bull market, the project started to raise slightly smaller raises, but there were many projects. And then what we see now is like a combination of the two. So that you're getting, you're not getting as big a raises as you were getting in 2017, but you're getting a lot more money raised. Yes. And because people realized that they don't want illiquid tokens anymore. And that's a very interesting change. I also see the difference between 17 and now. Because these ideas, like, IDOs in 2021, they all had raised like one, two million dollars. So they all went to the moon. They all pumped like a thousand X in 2021. In 17, they didn't pump that much because they raised 30 million and none of that went to liquidity. So now with big raises and liquidity, you get a whole new ballgame. Depending on, and we haven't really seen what happens with these pre sales that are fair liquidity launches because Bitcoin has been dumping ever since we started this trend. So once Bitcoin starts really pushing above 70k, if it does, it can get really interesting. Hey Chris, do you think this trend is going to last for long, or do you think similar to the previous to the previous one, this is going to be a temporary thing? I'm very curious to have your take, since with DAO Maker, you're taking this very seriously. You're launching your own pre-sale mechanism. So very curious to have your take on this. Yes, of course. Everybody says it's a very fast trend because everybody's getting rubbed. However, if now Dalmaker joined in and also Bakery Swap, they announced today $300 million plus pre sale on BNB chain to revive the chain. If more legit players come in, this game can continue for a while because people put money into pre sale, the money goes into LP and can be recycled again to a new pre sale. Before, for all of history of crypto, when people would send money to a different person's address, the money would leave the system because people would get scammed and the scam money would usually end up in real estate or some cars. Here it can be recycled, meaning if people will follow through on putting the money into LP, it can go on for a while. Yeah, what do you think? Yeah, I think I, I think I agree with you. Um, I think I agree with you. I think I think though that the one thing that I'm seeing with every cycle um, that we're in, and I must, you know, in one point I must actually commend you because I think this is the second cycle where I'm seeing you innovate. Is that the game is becoming more fair for the retail mass investor? Um, so, like, if you, if you take twenty. 2017 and 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 maybe early 2020 2021 the game was highly 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 skewed to the vcs like 90 10 to the vcs as we progressed later and we got the ideos and the ieos and stuff like that it went slightly more towards the retail investor and i think this is actually a very very big step to saying you know we're actually shifting the power completely away from the vc investor and into the retail investor's hands and I think when it comes to, uh, I'm, I'm going to use meme coins as an example, but but I think this should actually probably um, uh, iterate much more into into other coin investing, 
But I think if you think about who the major value add is in this part of the crypto cycle, and let me, let me define what I say this part of the crypto cycle. The first part of the crypto cycle was building infrastructure. So when you're trying to build infrastructure, you need technological skills. You need uh, uh, many skills that the retail investor simply doesn't bring to the party, right? So in that case, you could kind of make an excuse to say, you know what, the people who should get rewarded the most for taking risks were the VCs, and particularly the VCs that had technological skills that could help projects or, or market penetration skills that could help projects. But now we're getting into a diff now we're in a different world. We're in a, in a world where we have base, which is doing transactions at close to zero. We've got Solana, which is doing transactions at close to zero, uh, and all uh, free and fast. So I think that that generation of projects is finished, and the next project, the next generation of projects, or the next generation of blockchain is actually about adoption. And the reality is, when it comes to adoption, the people who add the most value are the people that are sitting here on the spaces because they are the early adopters of the technology. Anyone that's here and is playing meme coins on Solana using you know, Jupiter or whatever, whatever you guys are using to trade, you are the guys that are adding value to the infrastructure, to, to, the, to the project. And therefore the balance of power and the early profits and the, the big spiking profits should actually accrue to the people that are here on the spaces. And I think that what we're seeing, and this, what, you, what, what you're doing now um, is, one one lever that we're pulling to shift the balance of power to the to the the early adopter retail investor. Ron, I actually completely agree with you, my friend. Like when I think about everything that is happening with these pre-sales, I think that's actually a very egalitarian way for those like crypto gamblers in a in a in a nutshell. Because for many reasons, one in theory, for many of the so meme coins. All the pre sellers they get in at the same price. And it's the same price as the launch price. So there are no seed rounds, no private rounds, or anything you know, that would allow someone to get a better deal before the retail. And as you said, for the VC-funded tokens, you know, there are many rounds. And essentially, when the retail buys the token, it's, it has already 20x. So the game is skewed. You, say, you said it very well. Also, second, and it's actually super important, those meme coins, they usually, when they launch, there is no centralized exchange. You know, they launch on Radium or Uniswap, whatever, whatever DEX. So everything happens on chain. And this is extremely transparent. You know who's buying, you know who's selling. You know, with Bubble Maps, we've been investigating those tokens and you can see essentially everything that happens. And VC-funded tokens are quite the opposite. VC-funded tokens, they usually launch on a centralized exchange. So they can, you know, liquidate with market makers. Nobody knows and everything is happening off chain. So this is a huge difference. And lastly, my last point is like those founders that launch pre-sale on Solana, they don't make any money. They don't make any money because they have to put all the Solana in the LP. Now, they, they don't necessarily respect their promises, but in theory, they're supposed to put all the Solana in the LP. So the only way they can put they can make money through these pre-sales is by buying the token through the pre-sale like everybody else. So this is way this is way much fair than a, let's say a VC funded token if you want to gamble. I think that we're seeing like as I said, I think that in the last couple of months we've seen a major, major, major shift of power. Um, you, you can see it in, in many in many places. One you've you've said correctly is that if you look at this generation of tokens are all launching on decentralized exchanges and what we're then seeing is we're seeing the centralized exchanges scramble to list to be first to list the new coin which is ironic because usually the token has to beg the centralized exchange to list the token we're seeing a shift of power to the people to say now the exchanges are rushing to list the 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 the, the, the new coin second shift of power is in terms of RO return on investment, but let's for the, for people on this on this spaces, let's call uh, investment effort. So not actual financial investment, and that is when you look at something like airdrops. So airdrops is probably the highest return on investment that you can make in any market anywhere in the world right now. Like, and so you're getting and what 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 an airdrop is? An airdrop is saying to the early adopters 
who are willing to put in a little bit of effort and to be early adopters of technology, you will get a higher return on investment slash effort than any VC anywhere in the world. So like, you know, a VC can invest a million dollars and make $10 million, but a, a person on this basis who's just spent a little bit of time and maybe just used a little bit of funds, but on a very low risk of losing the funds, is actually making a higher investment than a venture capitalist. So I think that what we're noticing is a trend. The trend is away from infrastructure into adoption. In the, in the, the period of adoption, the people with the power are the, in the early adopter of the, of, the, of, the, in the, of the protocol, token, whatever else. And I think that what this, what this mechanism does is it just switches on one more lever of power that makes this group on this spaces much more powerful than the, the, the VCs. And I think if this trend continues, the next, or this bull market and the next bull market is going to be completely powered by people like us who are willing to take our time, effort, and energy and play with blockchain protocols. Right now, we're playing in this line of meme coin casino, but next it's going to be something else. And I think we must just look at that trend. Man, you nailed it. You nailed it. And I love what you said, Casino. You know why? Because collectively, as an industry, we are very prone to discredit meme coins, right? To disrespect meme coins. They have no utility. They're just shit. But I actually disagree. I think, um, I think actually those meme coins, they have a very strong utility, which is the fact that many people, what they seek is gambling. They want to dream. They want to make those huge gains. And I think really? like meme coins... They let, me share, let me share a personal story with you, and I'm not embarrassed to say it, but you know, I run a business, and my business has 65 people in it. It's crypto banter, it's a media channel. There's 65 people that work in our, in our, in our channel. And you know, when we, meme coins launched, um, I looked at meme coins, and I, the, my first impression around meme coins was don't waste your time on the shit. Um, don't waste your time on the shit. Just, this is just a passing phase, don't waste your time on it. Then, what started to happen was, out of the 65 people in my office, every single person in my office started to make life-changing money because they were trading meme coins, and 100% of their attention went into trading meme coins, to the point where I got very nervous that I wouldn't be able to retain my staff because, you know, someone who's earning $5,000 a month but just made $700,000 on a meme coin is very hard to retain. Then I realized something very, very important. And it, it, it reminded me very much of 20, I don't remember exactly which year, but the year that CryptoKitties launched. When CryptoKitties launched as the first NFT, everybody, including all the Ethereum maxis, got upset that kittens were clogging up the Ethereum network. We were all very upset about the fact that kittens were clogging up the Ethereum network. Fast forward one cycle, those kittens became NFTs. NFTs are now ticketing mechanisms, identification mechanisms, fractionalization mechanisms, ownership mechanisms, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we don't know how this progresses. What we do know is that we've probably created the biggest and most viral game that the world has ever seen. What is the game? The game is, can you take a bet on the culture roulette? So the culture roulette has an infinite, not an infinite number of numbers, but a big number of numbers. You have your stack of chips, and we are playing roulette. But the, the, the game of the roulette is entire, entirely driven by us, and we can control the roulette in a, certain, in, in a certain way. So you walk around and you say, where do I think the next bit of culture is going to go? And I place my chips on this culture roulette. So that is not very different from what a fashion outlet does. They place their chips on a culture roulette. That's what they do. We, we, I think what we are creating with meme coins is much bigger than a bunch of DJs playing on memes. We are creating a mechanism for people to bet on culture. And just like fashion companies bet on culture, just like car companies bet on culture, we are creating a futures market for culture. We are defining a new level of influences for culture. This you, you must not take, you, you have to take what we're doing here very, very seriously. And you have to take an approach where you're not looking at people putting money on Bowdoin or, or MAGA or, Bo, or whatever it is. And I'm putting money there myself. But we have created 
the biggest roulette game in the world and we have created a mechanism for betting on culture and identifying the set the trend setters of culture and that we don't know where it's going to take us we don't it's like this is the first iteration this is crypto kitties on ethereum we don't know where it's going to be next cycle but we know that we've created a a, a, a way to 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 bet on culture in the biggest game in the world at the moment and i don't know where it ends but i'm loving the journey and you know man even the blockchains they were aware of this they were aware that a huge a huge vertical of adoption for their chains are not necessarily how decentralized this is how transparent how secure it's essentially like what is going to be the biggest meme coin on my chain how many how many users join solana for bonk how many join avalanche for kok inu how many join you know another chain because a very popular tokens a very popular meme coin suddenly became a thing and suddenly skyrocketed into the rank of cmc so so that's huge and the chains they know intrinsically that if they want to attract user they they need to have this this a bit of you know cultural roulette as you said it and right now we've, we're seeing a huge spike on base on base the chain of coinbase why are people joining base they're joining base because suddenly there's a new cultural roulette there like there's new meme coins popping here and there so they want to they want to bet they want to play the game yeah i mean i think i think look, right now i think solana pretty much is very much in the front in terms of the culture in terms of uh, the culture in it but you know base base i think it's got a, a very good chance i think the one blockchain that hasn't yet entered the race uh, enough but could potentially win is telegram or ton because remember they have an integration into 900 million phones um or 900 million hands you know and i think that i don't think that we, that people have yet started to play with ton but i think that they also could be a good contender for for um for culture roulette or for for winning the culture roulette but uh, i mean I either think way, that. but you know ton always has been very under the radar remember how it started with the massive 1.5 billion ico sec then said keep plug your investors or we take you from the app store I, 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 I was an investor actually i was an investor in telegram and i think they gave us back 70 percent of our money and told everyone they were abandoning the project exactly. and then they didn't really abandon the project exactly they just kind of kept their head down and trying to do the same now it's interesting to watch them because everybody knows if they go full force they can completely take over but the sec will just take them off the app store and um, i know and in the way they've done it is very 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 smart uh in that you know they, what, what they did was they gifted the 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 development to the community and they just integrated the coin into or the chain onto the app and they're like look guys with my own bias it's a completely decentralized uh, uh, protocol so on the other hand um there's a lot of people from the meme coin community here and a lot of people asking about what pundu is going to be like why we're doing this so i'm going to go a bit into uh, why pundu what the story is because a lot of people invested put money into sol put money to dot maker and we can get back to the more sophisticated conversations but i pundu is basically the idea that that's what i was pitched that slurf is a most has the most attention on all chains i look at meme coins as tokenized attention more than ever now and the more attention you have the higher the market cap goes because most coins have no utility so the only thing that makes them go up is if people press buy and people don't press sell so attention makes people press buy community building makes them press not sell the Pundu team said we can jump on this and do a panda panda never has never been around yet it's original everybody loves pandas and pandas are actually a lot like sloths in the sense that they're lazy they're slow they're slightly incompetent so i was like quite enticed at the whole concept and they said if you do this we'll be in and uh, we don't want to be the raid ourselves because setting up lp can go wrong and everybody heard about the slurf guy crying all over the spaces 
So we said, sure, this makes sense. I think this is a narrative that can work, make everybody bullish. So we started incubating them, collaborating about a few weeks ago. And we had this idea of 50% unlock on TTE. Slurf burned all the tokens, so that's our 0% unlock on TTE. Meaning, in that sense, Pundu should be half as good as Slurf if it's a fair launch and half the tokens are unlocked. The remaining are slowly injected into the market over six months. So that's interesting is that the market cap of the project is actually going to be smaller than the liquidity, which has well, happened one time with Slurf, but that was an accident. So this is the first time someone is trying to do something without completely wrecking all the participants. So what that, that means, half as good as Slurf, but people don't get burnt. And we said, that's a great idea. Let's do it. Here we are. We've been working very, very hard. Um, we've been working with the Soulstorm team. Uh, we have built a platform, a like platform for meme coins on Solana. They've been focused on helping us with the claim, focused on making sure everything is safe. And they can talk a bit about the journey because distributing these pre-sales is extremely difficult because Solana has high, high failure rates. And that's probably a big reason why a lot of these pre-sales just rug because they, they're just too lazy to distribute. And distribution, standard distribution will take approximately eight hours of sending transactions. So um, if you want, Soulstorm, you guys can talk a bit about the process, about your own product, about claim process, give people some context to security that we've put into over the last four days into the sale. Yeah. Yeah. First of all, thanks for the introduction. So basically, we're uh, from cybersecurity perspective, and uh, we've been working with Rust programming language for, let's say, eight years. And now we just decided to build some product on Solana and we started the source storm. So in in our case with let's say the DAO maker and Pondo, we build them the claim portal because we we faced the um so so the the very 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 difficult user experience with let's say token distribution and uh cooperating with smart contracts on the Solana like it's uh, a bit difficult. And also, there is some limits on the soul scan and uh, different like, like Solana FM and other tools on Solana, which are uh, limiting on five thousand transactions. So you you can't upload the wallet amounts and stuff. And uh, we faced it a lot of times with different types of people. I seen a lot of information in different chats that someone didn't get any tokens on the pre-sales, and uh, I think that's because the the soul scan itself didn't showing any transactions after the 5,000 transactions. So there is the issue, which are probably also the um, the problem for, uh, let's say, token owners to distribute the tokens. Um, also, we, we, we face the problem with uh, scripts for Solana because it's a bit difficult to uh, build something on Solana itself and uh, a lot of developers and let's say the meme token owners uh, even don't have any Solana experience. They're trying to raise like, let's say 10 million or something. And they faced a lot of problems with, uh, uh, let's say the Solana ecosystem. And we're trying to uh, build a tool which will help like raise the money. So the social term is like, as Chris called like a pink sale, let's say, but we, we have the liquidity protection, we burn the liquidity by ourselves. So we have like a lot of different tools to simplify the processes for token owners and for users to participate in the Solana sales, let's say. Yeah, basically, that's the kind of small introduction of our product. All right, so to summarize this, I mean, Ran, but are you going to enjoy this? People getting rugged. Because Soul Scan, Ether Scan of Solana, only shows the last 5,000 transactions. So, unless you write a good script and run this, you will not, you will just lose the transactions that happen to the wallet. Yeah. Because Solana is very basic. 
Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why they limit this thing because it's like it's it's pretty strange. And for scanning the whole blockchain and all every transaction which related to like the wallet, it takes like twenty four hours if you will use the quick note. It's like the solution for Solana, and you have to uh, like you you have to have some insane developer team as we are uh, to build something and uh, implement some on Solana. All right, so this is from the devs. I'm gonna let over now the the DGens, like the old people boy. So I have Dao Inter, who spends about 15 hours a day getting rugged on different meme coins, and the Pundo team. So you guys can take over the inter interview within the meme community, and I will mute myself. But yeah, everybody welcome the Dao Inter and the Pundo team. Well, thanks for the floor. Um, I've been working for DAO Maker for the past three years now. It's been a journey seeing ups and downs. And I feel like this is, this is a major next step, given that I've always been an on-chain trader, somebody who enjoys memes, uh, who enjoys um, trading these fair launches, given that I believe these are truly fair launches, giving everybody the same opportunity, the same entry and the same chances on-chain. While with VC-led uh, incubations, sometimes one party gets the overhand to that to another. But I feel like Downmaker has truly made a step forward with experimenting with Bundu. Uh, given that the LP is truly burned, everybody has the same chance of entry, oversubscription, no first come, first serve. Um, I feel like um, this is an experiment that I'm particularly excited about uh, and hope that it turns out well. Hey guys, can you hear me okay? Yes. Excellent. So I'm Wayne, I'm from the Pundu team. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. And uh, yeah, the utmost gratitude to the Downmaker team for believing in what we're doing. Um, really believe in the, the essence of fur launches and the whole mechanic, you know, I've run, big fan by the way, my friend. <laughs> follow you um you know uh, thank you my friend. of, of thank what you do yeah and look you know we've to be honest that can just glaze over what everybody has been saying in this conversation so far fur launch i have three friends this week that have unfortunately lost 20k the other one 5k on fur launches I'm not going to name drop because just out of respect, but with Dow Maker in the position that they are now backing Pundu, this gives us that edge. And the main culture is something that honestly, personally, you know, 12 months ago, I shied away from. I really did because I was like, okay, this is not sustainable. This isn't going to work long term. Let's focus on the utilities. But we're all here. There's one common denominator. And the conversation that I have with multiple people, VCs, marketing agencies, blockchains, we're all in this bull run now for one reason, because it can absolutely change our lives beyond comprehension. And what we've seen with Slurf, and again, I'm not one for throwing shade at anybody or any project. They do what they do, let them do it. But you need that trust and integrity, especially in something like this. And what we're trying to do with Pundu, it's a new narrative. Who doesn't like pandas? They're cool. <laughs> you know? I agree. Uh, I was actually wondering how there's no top panda coin out there. Well, the, 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 this is such the point. The animals. This is the point. Look at the cat and the dog coins. Yeah? Look at dog coins. Ship. Doge. And then even today, as we speak right now, people are trying to replicate that. So if we can be at the forefront right now of pandas, yeah, which I actually thought they were endangered. They're actually a vulnerable species. So... <laughs> Um, cool fact for you guys, but this is what we're trying to do. And we're trying to create a new narrative 
with the right culture. And again, I'm not going to name drop some of the tokens that we've seen, but I'm sure you guys, everybody on this call has been just on Dex Screener, Dex Tools, everywhere, you know, in the depths of DeFi. And the, just the, the culture alone is, is an ethical. Tell me, about, tell me about the culture of Punda. I want to hear more about the culture of Punda. I know Punda is pretty new. I mean, I can see, obviously, I can see the, the, the panda, but just maybe just tell me a little bit about how it works, what it stands for. Walk me through the backstory. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, look, you know, pandas are globally loved all around and you know we've taken the the cat and dog meme concepts and even the frog with pepe and we're trying to bring something now that is is fur that is new that will be the new narrative moving forward and you know we're with a parody of the industry and you know, let's be real most of the l2s out there are, are much of a meme as as anything that exist right now. Everybody's trying to piggyback. Everybody's trying to be the next best thing. And this is something new. This doesn't exist. What we're trying to build, the white paper is in process right now, should be ready very, very soon. The L2 is already underway. We've got a team of three. We're building and growing you know, exponentially. Um, I think that three probably in the next few weeks will be in double figures. So am that's... I right? Am I right in saying that like like Pundu represents everything that we are, but don't want to admit it publicly? <laughs> yeah, you know we can take um, yeah, you know we can take that at, at face value because we're here for you know for uh, a common reason and common goal. But if we do it in the right way, let's do it in the right way. If we can all be a part of something that trends and that can actually stand the test of time, which look at Ship, you know, look at Pepe, look at all these other, you know, Dogecoin, you know, Elon Musk only two weeks ago was saying, yeah, <laughs> Tesla are going to accept Dogecoin again. You know, if we can be something that's fun, because, you know, life is just too serious right now and it's just too dark. You know, the society that we live in, we were very much driven by social media. And our children that grow up are being told how to be. At 12 years of age, they're not able to define themselves. And with this, with meme culture, that is the new narrative in life. Forget crypto. Memes exist. The reason we launch meme coins and tokens projects is because of the narrative that all was already created and if we can bring something good from that and again you know with the partners that i think someone muted you i think someone muted everyone I'm sorry, everyone. I just spilled my finger and muted everyone. Uh, please unmute yourself. <laughs> oh, I was on a roll then. <laughs> uh, bro, next, bro, next thing you'll burn the LP token. Careful, careful. <laughs> well, that, you know, this is the thing. And again, I'm not going to throw shit. I'm not here to throw shit at anybody else, any other project. What's the point? They've done what they've done. Let them sit with that. As the saying goes, you make your bed, you lay in it. But for us, we're just trying to bring something cool that's fair, you know, that everybody can be a part of. And we've got to, we've got to appreciate the space and the narrative that we're in and just the, the, the vibe that we're in, you know. As I say, you're building the bear and you're prospering the bull. And I'm sure everybody on this call, the however many people, it's actually quite intimidating reading the figure, the amount of people listening to this right now. And I hope that, you all agree with what I'm saying, but we're, we're here for, um, not sure what that noise was, it wasn't me, by the way, but yeah, you know, we're, we're all here to be a part of something, and if we can make money with it, oh my, wow, even better. Absolutely. But in the, in the right way, you know, that if we look at Solana right now, and just the, the ethical 
oh my god, you know, negativity with some of the tokens that we're seeing, and it, it's it's not my cup of tea, as we say in the UK, but. For other people, it is. Clearly, for the developers and the project owners that are launching these coins, yeah, okay, that's fine. We're not doing that. We are not doing that. We will be here. We want to be here. We want to build something. We want to build something cool and fun at the beginning and then transcend into something like SHIB. SHIB was not meant to be what it is right now. I agree. And I feel like the, the community isn't worried at all about um, the community aspect itself. I mean, look at the statistics that we have. We have broken launchpad records, mm -hmm. have raised um, eight figures um, in less than a day, um, and the amount of participants is just mind-boggling. So in the moment we launch, we'll have thousands of people being part of the community and uh, shilling it everywhere. So I'm not too worried about that. But I feel like we should drop some, some interesting info for, for the listeners here because everybody that is here indeed is believing into Pundu anyway. So can you leak some upcoming announcements or any plans oh. you guys have? Obviously, oh. as much as you can <laughs> without spilling too much because I feel like it's a key aspect of running a project. Absolutely. Of course. But if yeah. anything that you can share, feel free to drop some alpha here. Yeah, of course, absolutely. Um, I am guilty of dropping too much alpha at times, but I have been told this is very important to keep, you know, <laughs> to keep things content at this stage because we are very early. From the listing aspects, Dalmaker, these are the guys that are obviously, you know, kind of pulling the strings for us, you know, helping us and propping us up. We've got other advocates in the space as well that are massively supporting us. And, you know, I mean, we don't raise that amount of money in such a short period of time without massive backing. The L2 is already in the works. The white paper, again, close to publication. That's pretty much what I can share right now. But... The main thing for us now is building that community, taking what we have, what we've generated, the, everybody listening to this right now, we're just making something of it, making something fun. That's the whole point of what we're trying to do and do it in the right way. Because I could never, if I thought that I would have acted nefariously in this space, which I never have, by the way, never have. Whether you know me or you don't, I will never do that. That is not in my DNA. But if I can build generational wealth for me, my family, my grandkids, you know, imagine having the conversation with your grandchildren. Hi, granddad. How did you um, get to this position? Well, sit down, my young grandchild. <laughs> Let me tell you about Pundu. <laughs> you know, imagine those conversations because they will happen. They will happen. They've, they're happening to people now. Okay, when the grandkids grow up and they're able to have these conversations. But that's what we're trying to build. The first thing right now is the community. That is what we position. We've got the funding. We've got the backing, the support, the advocates, everybody on this call to push this to where we truly want it to be. But with integrity. That's that's the that's the you know that's the nucleus right there. I, I agree. I feel like the other pre-sales uh, and most of the reason <clears throat> why they didn't perform well, in fact, is because they they don't have established players behind them, right? Well, if you think about it, you also have greedy developers that are just absolutely. doing this for a quick win. And again, <laughs> Dalmaker are definitely not going to put their name. And their neck on the line. Absolutely. To act I mean, in that way. Dowmaker was known as the number one launch pad during the last bull run by far in terms of ROI, in terms of users, in terms of every metric. And they have been highly selective even in the, in the bear market. I mean, I saw the team. 90% of the projects don't get through. They don't get a chance to pitch no. the Dowmaker. So I've seen that Pundu has been selected is already an indicator to me that it's standing out. It's mm -hmm. unique and it will do well. For that, I'm sure. 
And I mean, if, if you just look at the latest um, Strongholder offering, the latest launch on Dow Maker, your AI, I mean, public participants. So people that don't even hold Dow, they made 100x in two days. Think about it. Like, mm. Dow Maker is highly selective. Make sure that users of Dow Maker themselves are not getting rugged on some stupid project. So I'm highly bullish on, on what Pundi is building and looking forward to what is actually planned. Yeah, likewise. And we've got some very, you know, sturdy reinforcements. You know, Chris, is, Chris has grilled me <laughs> to the highest heavens, which, is, again, gives me confidence that we're working with the right people and the right team. Because everybody listening right now, you're all thinking, Oof, well, we've been on these AMAs before. How can we be sure? I'm not going to stand here right now and guarantee that by the end of this, we will all meet up and whisper sweet nothings. You can never guarantee in any investment capacity, in any industry. But if you do the best, then you can potentially achieve the best. And again, that's why we've worked on this for a long time with the guys. And yeah, Chris has been very you know, persevering with us and, and the other guys as well and the team at, at Dalmec. So we're very appreciative of, of that in, in general, overall. And we truly believe that this will be a success um, beyond what we've already achieved. Because... To raise that amount in such a short period when there's been, as you mentioned, so many rugs with pre-sales. Again, you know, my friends have been <laughs> falling foul this week. One guy, 20 grand from three pre-sales. Because there's no protection. There's no transparency. There's no foundation. There's no people putting the neck on the line and the name. And that's the it's reputation by association. That's what my former mentor told me. And I was like, wow, there's only a few things that stick with me in life. But that was one of them. And that is so true. Reputation by association. And that's in any walk of life. But yeah, maybe I should give the floor to somebody. I'm getting quite excited, obviously, for, for obvious reasons. But there's... Uh, there's a lot that's coming in the uh, in the pipeline, but yeah, for sure. Um, looking forward to, to what's ahead for sure. Hey everyone, can you hear me? Okay. Yep. Yes. Okay. Great, great. Well, first of all, I just want to say. Everything that Dowmaker has been doing lately, it's been so great. So my community, we heavily invested in Dowmaker um, actually around the bottom in November of 2022. So we were just waiting very, very patiently. We knew this was coming, right? There's going to be bull run right after halving. And we are already seeing that momentum already there, even though we are not even there yet, you know, as far as the Bitcoin halving goes. So everybody's super excited in my community that we are part of Dowmaker. Um, we are investors in Dowmaker. We participate in the IDOs. I also serve uh, Dowmaker as a key opinion leader. Um, great performance with your AI. It's absolutely phenomenal. Um, I am so excited about that project. I think it's going to do great. We are just getting started there. As far as uh, Pundu goes, when is the launch date? I mean, you guys have already raised $20 million. I mean, that's crazy for a meme coin. <laughs> when are you launching? <laughs> uh, okay, as I said earlier, um, just in case you missed it, this is a question for the Dow Maker team because we obviously are yeah. strong I'm in collaboration here. with them. So, yeah, Chris, over to you, my friend. Thank you. So, we are planning to launch on Monday. We're now in some negotiations and probably going to make a poll if the community wants to because this is not the normal kind of coin. 95% of the tokens, they go to people. Which really means there is no real team. There is a multi-sig that is owned by Dowmaker and a few other people, including Pundo team, that we are, you know, brainstorming how to spend the money on. But 95% is with the people. We will 
most likely make a poll if we should list on Monday. And we just got in exciting news that we will share after this space on the Pundu chat. And if people vote for that, then we'll go out on Monday. That's absolutely fantastic. So there is no waiting for weeks after weeks after weeks or months and then asking questions about when launch, all of that. I mean, that's that's amazing. Really, really good. Glad to hear that. Thank you. Anybody, anybody else? Questions for the Pundu team, for us regarding the launch? Um, now is the time to ask questions. Because uh, there's 280 comments in the chat. God damn it. <laughs> so well, it's a good time for me to explain the oversubscription system because we've been getting a lot of questions for it. Oversubscription means if we raise $100,000 and there's $200,000 in the wallet, then everybody gets 50% allocation and 50% refund. So if you put in a dollar, you will get 50 cents of an allocation and you will get 50 cents of a refund. The refund of your Solana will be airdropped. The tokens that you will receive are going to be distributed via the Soulstorm platform, which again is a pink sale like platform that been, has been built out for approximately six months. So it's really perfectly positioned for the Solana hype. And a lot of people didn't get this. They thought, okay, we're being too late. We don't have time. The hard cap is filled. You are not too late. There is no too late. Too late is tomorrow at 11 a.m. That's when contributions close. And the team of Dowmaker, the team of Pundo, and the Soulstorm team are going to do our thing to essentially refund all the Solana, which is quite a lot of work. It's going to take the whole day because the blockchain doesn't allow for a lot of transactions. And we are looking forward to launch on Monday. The launch will have approximately 15 million in liquidity. And a market cap of seventeen, a market cap of sixteen million, and an FTV of seventeen million, which will make it one of the most liquid coins we ever launched. It is going to be the most liquid coin that we ever launched, and it's very exciting. Bubbles or Wendy, Lady Tra, now is a good time to ask questions before we close off the the AMA. It's been an hour. Um, I have a question. What are you guys going to do for the marketing? I know Dowmaker itself, I mean, it's being associated with them. That's big marketing. But then what else is um, is on the plate? So I'm going to answer that as well. We in the Pundu team, we, we incubate projects. So there's two types of things in Dowmaker. The ones that just come on the Launchpad platform, we review if this company is a legitimate team because the majority of listings are just the same guys over and over and over again, rugging everybody. So one of our main key requirements to get listed on Downmaker is that it's a real startup. That comes in and goes out. The second type of projects is incubations. We finished incubation of your AI, which today went 100x at 30, at 40 cents-ish around. A lot of people are very happy. And Pundu is going to be a semi-incubation. Incubation means we help with the strategy, we come with the concepts, but after a process of one month, two months before listing, and a month or two months after listing, they're on their own. The marketing narrative for Pundu that we came up with the team is essentially the South Park of crypto. Crypto is quite ridiculous. Most L2s, most L1s as well are really not needed and not asked for. And Pundo wants to highlight the absurdity of the entire industry. We are going to help with tech to potentially create a chain for Pundo that is going to be similar to many other chains that just exist to exist. And that's essentially the marketing. Every tweet we do, we jump on certain trends and ridicule them, make them more absurd. Just like, okay, what we had before, what is better, dog or panda? Who cares? It's liquid. That's what people want. They want to be able to sell and buy without being scared of getting rugged. And Pundu is all of this. It is, ironically, the most ridiculous thing happening ever. But at the same time, it is one of the safest things because it is fair, it is liquid, and it's secure. All right, any more questions?
We're going to close in about five to ten minutes. Dao intern, you want to show yourself a bit in your meme coins? <laughs> Otherwise, I can ask, talk a bit about Dao Maker. I enjoy the fact that Dao Maker also understands that the industry, or majority of it, is just a joke. I mean, anybody who trades meme coins in this space can agree that lately meme coins have gotten completely off the road. Like some of the, the meme matters, some of the pre sales some of the launches, they have obscene names. Um, they have, yeah, devs that don't even understand how to deploy a token. Um, everything is just moving lately. And I feel like having an opportunity like this, a good narrative, a great mascot, um, a great team supported by DAO Maker, and so on and so forth. And I can guarantee there's great announcements coming that most people don't even expect. Like I'm sure centralized exchange listings are going to come sooner than most people expect. There's probably going to be a lot of support from people that, that you admire. Um, I think with these type of launches, um, it's 100 times smarter to, to go into something like this than to buy meme coins while you get rugged five minutes later. Because that's what's been happening to me the entire last week. I mean, at work, I, I take my lunch break. 10 minutes, I aped into two meme coins. Two seconds later, I lose like a couple hundred bucks. Basically, my entire salary. So honestly, speaking here to all the meme coin enjoyers, it's a time where meme coins will get absurd. Um, it's a dangerous game. And the more people lose money, the more people go into quality. And Pundu is something where I can surely say it will be one of the best memes on Solana, just given by the metrics that we already see on the race. Um, so have some faith, believe in something, join the Pondu movement, um, and we'll see you at the top when it launches. Amazing. Wendy, you want to ask last question? Yes, and I apologize if somebody already asked this because I got in late because I was streaming, but I kind of I guess this question is directed more towards Dowmaker, but why did you guys essentially step in to launch Pundu? Is it because of all the hype that was going on on Solana and all the different pre-sales? Because as I'm hearing the conversation um, take place, it feels like Pundu isn't really like a meme coin. It's more of like something that actually has utility to help people make better choices when they're doing their due diligence. So what is a meme coin even? Bitcoin is a meme coin. Bitcoin doesn't do anything. The industry is a meme. People, some people say a meme coin is a coin that has transaction taxes, that has no exchanges. A meme coin is a coin that has a funny logo of an animal. I don't know. I think every coin is a meme coin. There are certain coins that actually have utility that simulate securities, but officially that's, that's illegal. Right? So. As per regulation, every single coin in the industry is sort of a meme coin. The difference between meme coins and other meme coins is that meme coins understand the most important thing is to grab attention because that's what makes people buy and build community because that's what makes people not sell. And I think the Pundu team is really good at that. I personally like the story. It was a good opportunity for us to jump in because people don't care which meme coin they buy. They're like, let me send money to a tweet. And from what I understood, Small just got wrecked. And Dalmec is like, we're a big launch pad. So let's just take care. We wanted to open up even earlier because we knew if we, every day that we wait, people are going to get wrecked. But we had to work with the devs. We had to test everything. We had to run simulations. So we ended up opening yesterday and it was crazy to Matt. We we seen like twenty million dollars in fifteen hours or twelve hours. And it's going also very well for Downmaker. We recently introduced this thing called the boost button, which allows people to increase their allocation size in exchange for swapping their USDT into DAO. As a result, DAO went parabolic because everybody's like, give me more size of my allocation. Additionally we are also going to swap 10% of the refunded Solana into DAO. And this is how we're entering the Solana ecosystem with, I assume, around 7,000 participants in the Pundu sale. All going to have 90% refund on Solana and 10% refund in DAO, which means we'll end up with, depending on how the sale goes, 
a few mil in Solana that we're going to gradually buy back on the Solana decks at a radium or Jupiter. We haven't decided yet, but this is going to be our introduction for Dowmaker into Solana because Solana is here to stay. <clears throat> so I guess that's it. It's been an hour. Um, thank you. And I see no more hands. I appreciate the call, lady trader. Do you want to still talk? Otherwise, Pundu team, you want to say bye bye? Otherwise, I'll close it off here. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's been a pleasure uh, joining yeah. this first with all of you awesome, cool people, and look forward to what's ahead. Cool. And we and keep an eye on the Pundu Twitter account. Please follow, especially if you've already invested through contributing the Solano wallet or have contributed through Dowmaker. Yep. Because we're going to add a poll there soon for a very important vote. And we just got the approval recently during this AMA. Um, well, hopefully we can do this more often. It was very exciting. It was our first time ever doing a space. And looking forward to the next one. Thank you, Bubble Maps. Thank you, Wendy. Obviously, thank the Pundu team. And most of all, the Dow intern who's been supporting for years.